<laughs> Welcome to the Aquarium Online Academy brought to you by the Aquarium of the Pacific. My name is Stacy, and I am going to hang out with you all for this session here to talk about turtles. I hope that you like turtles. I definitely like turtles. And if you have any questions or anything that you would like to share, we would love to hear from you. The best way to get in touch with us is via text. There's a number right there. It's 562-286-1838. And if you text us, uh, make sure to add your name too, because we can add your name in there. And um, I will read your questions on, uh, on our program here and answer them for you as well. Now, if you are watching this as a recorded program, that totally works too. We would still love your questions. All you have to do is email. The, the email address is a little bit further down there, but it's live at lb aop.org. Again, that's live at lbaop.org. Okay, so we said we're talking about turtles, right? And you're probably looking at this really cool image here behind me. This is a peek at one of our exhibits at the aquarium called Shark Lagoon. And this is where we not only have some bony fish like that funny little fish that just swam behind me, but also some of our really cool sharks. Now, why are we showing sharks? If we're going to talk about turtles, well, we actually have a turtle too. It's right in there. Did you see it? It's hiding in the cave. Now, this is actually pretty typical turtle behavior um, because they don't have to do act like active things all of the time. Um, really, the activity that they uh, do most of the time is eating. And if they're not really hungry, then they're probably just going to rest, especially this kind of turtle, the Olive Ridley. Now, I just saw it stirring a little bit. Maybe it knows we're talking about it. <laughs> Hard to say, um, but maybe a little bit later on, we'll take a peek in here again and see if that little Olive Ridley has moved at all. So sea turtles. Now sea turtles are a kind of reptile, which means they have a lot in common with other reptiles. Now, can you think of any other animals, be it in the water or on land, that are reptiles? Hmm. What other animals can you think of that are reptiles? Now, if you're thinking maybe crocodiles and alligators, absolutely. So are lizards, um, tortoises, which are much like turtles but live on land, and, uh, and snakes. They even have, let's see, we even have like legless lizards and all kinds of really cool um, reptiles out there. Now, what are some of the things that they have in common that make a reptile a reptile? Now, let's go ahead and show you a picture of a reptile and, and think about what makes this here a reptile? Hmm. Now, I'm going to get out of the way so that way you can take a real good view of this here sea turtle. Well, one thing is that a reptile is a vertebrate. Now, for those of you who haven't heard that term before, you, you kind of don't remember what that means. A vertebrate is an animal with a vertebrae. Now, that doesn't really help either, right? <laughs> it's an animal with a backbone. And we actually are vertebrates as well. Now, we are not reptiles, but we are vertebrates. We have a backbone. And if you were to actually feel in the center of your back here, you can feel there's kind of some bumps. And if you're having a tough time with that, you can feel kind of up here where your neck and your back meet, and you can feel those bumps there. Now, those bumps are your vertebrae. They're right underneath your skin there. It's our backbone or our spine. Okay? So... These reptiles also have that vertebrae, that backbone, all right? They um, also have lots and lots of scales. Did you notice this? Look at all those scales. So they have lots and lots of scales that cover their bodies. Um, so that scaly skin. Now, what is the point of, a, of scales? Why would an animal have scales? How does it help them? Well, their scales are actually a form of protection. Now, believe it or not, our skin is actually protection. Our skin protects us from all kinds of things. Um, and so we like having skin, right? Well, it's like having skin with even thicker protection. So their scales keep things away like maybe parasites. It protects them where if they bump into something, they don't get cuts right away. Their, their scales may protect them from things like cuts, um, especially minor bumps and things like that. So scales are incredibly useful for reptiles. Now, what else makes a reptile a reptile? Here's a hint. How do they have babies? Did you say eggs? And that's true. Most reptiles, not all, 
but most reptiles actually lay eggs. And it's the same thing with our turtles here. Even though they live in the ocean, they do lay eggs. And we'll talk about that in a little bit because it's tricky living in the ocean and laying eggs, especially if you're a, a air breathing animal like a turtle is. So reptiles do have to breathe air. That's another one, right? So just like us, they do have to breathe air. They have lungs that are going to help them with that. And here we go. Here is a turtle breathing. So this is one reason why we actually get to see so many turtles out there is because they have to come to the surface in order to breathe. And then the other thing that um, reptiles have is cold blood. Now it doesn't mean their blood is actually cold. What it means is the temperature of their body is really affected by the temperature outside of them in their habitat. So for us, our body temperature is the same all the time. Um, if you were to take your temperature with a thermometer, it should be the same whether it's the summer or the winter. The only time for us it changes is when maybe you get sick and you have a fever or something like that, right? So um, it's different for a reptile. For a reptile, when it's cold out there, their bodies on the inside are actually kind of cold. And when it's warm outside, their bodies are pretty warm. So they're really influenced by the temperature around them. Have you ever gone outside and been really, really lucky and you see a little lizard hanging out on the sidewalk? Yeah, those little lizards are hanging out on the sidewalk because the sidewalks are really toasty warm from the sun uh, warming it up. And, um, and also they're getting the sun on their backs too. So what they're doing is they're warming up and that warmth actually helps them to move a little bit more. And I kind of feel like we're a little bit like that too. When it's cold out, I feel like it takes a little bit more for me to kind of start moving around. When it's warmer, it's a little bit easier. And so for um, our reptile friends, it really influences their life. When it's warm out, they can digest better, they can move better. Um, of course, it can get too warm too, so that's not so good. But, um, but if it gets too cold, then they can't really move so well. So they need to be able to get over to some warmth in order to warm up. Sure. All right. So here is a really cool picture of a sunning reptile. This here is a marine iguana. So it is an iguana, but these ones live in, um, in the ocean, which is kind of a cool thing. Um, so let's compare all of those reptile characteristics. Okay. We saw all of those things with the turtle, but what about with our, um, our iguana here? Is it a vertebrate? Well, it's hard to tell because, you know, you kind of need an x-ray, but you can see that this has a lot of structure, right? I'm pretty sure it has a skeleton and having that skeleton also means it has that backbone. Okay. So it is a vertebrate. Does it have scaly skin? Absolutely. You can see all of that bumpy, bumpy, scaly skin. And in fact, these animals are known to shed their skin. So that's why you see a funny little patch here um, because those scales kind of get old over time. And so they have to get some new ones because it's such an important part of their life. So, um, so being able to shed that outer layer is really, really helpful um, to make sure that they have that strong, sturdy, scaly skin. Okay. Well, it's hard to tell here, but yes, they do lay eggs. And as we said before, they are definitely a cold-blooded animal. They have to warm up in the sun, just like you see here. Now, uh, it is breathing air too. You can see kind of the nostrils right here and also why it's kind of hanging out on land. So, so yes, these are all things that reptiles have in common, not just among turtles and tortoises, but among things like uh, lizards, like iguanas and uh, snakes and, and other types of reptiles as well. So we know that these are reptiles and that's fantastic. But what makes... Uh, what is the difference between a land tortoise and a sea turtle? So that's an interesting question. Now, before we really jump into that, um, I actually have a question here. Does anything prey on adult turtles? And, um, and yeah, there, there are a handful of things that do. Now, um, if you think about this, do you think an adult sea turtle is easy to eat? Take a look at it real quick. So it has some really good defensive strategies, right? One of them is this massive shell. This shell here covers 
almost their entire body. And that's a really great way to um, deter a lot of predators. There aren't many things that are going to be able to really eat a sea turtle like this, especially when it's large. When they're little, they can get eaten because they're so bitty, they're basically bite-sized. So when they get big though, it's much, much tougher. Now there are some large sharks, like say a tiger shark, um, that can actually uh, eat a turtle, but that it's, it's still really tough because turtles know as long as that shell is in their way, Maybe they even swim, so their shell kind of goes upright. And so when the shark comes like this, you can't really take a bite. When the turtles do that, they're still really tough to eat. So although it is a prey item of some of those large sharks, it's pr still pretty hard. Um, now there are also, there's a couple of uh, occurrences of leatherbacks, which are um, some really large sea turtles actually, that have been eaten by orcas as well. So not too many things can eat an adult turtle, but it does take a very long time to go from a bitty little one that many things can eat to a large adult turtle that not much can eat. Now I have Adrian and Anderson here asking how many miles can a turtle travel in its lifetime? That's a real good question. I actually don't know the answer to that, but thankfully I have a team here. Now my friend Kaya is actually controlling all the cool pictures and videos that you see back here. So thanks so much for that, Kaya. And my friend Talia is uh, at another computer. She's the one who's getting all of your text messages in. And when there's a tough question like this one from Adrian and Anderson, um, she's able to kind of figure out what those answers are. So it looks like they can migrate thousands of miles in their lifetime. Thousands of miles! That's incredible. Um, one female leatherback turtle traveled 12,000 miles round trip. So that's one trip. That's insane. So these turtles are really, really made well for traveling. And you know, that's actually a really good point. That's one of the big differences between a sea turtle and a land tortoise. So if you think about a land tortoise, I'm talking about um, the tortoises that live like in the desert, okay? Those animals are really good at hanging out on land, tromping around. They have feet that, their feet are almost like fists and they go bomb, 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 and they just kind of walk around on the ground, right? Now, if those feet were on this turtle, it would not be a good swimmer. So instead, it has these beautiful flippers. And these beautiful flippers are what's going to allow it to actually swim in the water. They are really efficient at swimming, actually. And some of these turtles can can actually find uh, currents. So that's parts of the ocean where the water just kind of gets pushed along. They can ride the currents. And so they require even less energy to, uh, to swim around. But uh, if you were to watch a turtle swim, you can actually see how they flap their flippers up and down in order to kind of push themselves through that water. All right, so it's kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and watch this turtle here in this cool video. All right, so do you see how those flippers move? It's perfect for pushing them through the water. I mean, I think it's doing a real good job swimming there. And there's a little fishy friend hanging out with it. This is pretty common. Um, the, the fishy friends hang out with turtles because, well, I'm not gonna lie to you here. Turtles eventually go to the bathroom and it makes a tasty snack for some of the little fishy friends. So the fishy friends hang out because the turtle provides them with food. It's a little different, but it works for them. Sure, why not, right? Okay, so again, a big difference between a sea turtle and a land tortoise are those long front flippers there that they use for, um, for swimming. Now, many of you probably know that turtles actually do go on land though. They don't go on land often, but sea turtles do have to go on land in order to lay their eggs. If a turtle was to lay its eggs in the water, that little baby wouldn't survive because that baby, just like these turtles here, needs air in order to get its oxygen. So that's why those eggs have to be laid on land. Now the nests that they create are incredibly important. Sea turtles dig a nest in the sand. And when they dig that nest in the sand, they're digging it at the perfect depth to keep it perfectly warm. And so it's pretty crazy. They actually have to dig the hole, 
they lay all the eggs there and then they put the sand over it. Now, even though those eggs are under sand, there's air that still circulates through. So those babies that are developing inside those eggs can still get the oxygen they need to survive. And the nest is warmed by the sun for one, and also the temperature kind of changes when you dig into the sand. Have you ever uh, been to a sandy area before? And maybe it's a really hot day and you're walking on the sand, your feet kind of get burned, right? Well, the best thing to do is to dig a little bit into the sand and put your feet underneath the sand and it'll be cooler. But it's the same thing on a cooler day. On a cold day, I've walked on sand before and my feet got kind of chilly. And when I was standing for a long time, I buried my feet down a little bit and the, the sand was actually warmer under the surface there. So that kind of tells us that these nests can have a different temperature than just the surface of the sand. And here's the crazy part about the temperature of a, of a turtle nest. It, uh, the boys, and girls are determined by the temperature of the sandy nest. So the cooler spaces, so typically that's kind of the, uh, well, I guess usually the higher up, I wanna say. The cooler spaces tend to be boys. And the girls are made by warmer sand. So it's pretty crazy how this works out. And so when a turtle digs a nest, when everything is just as it should be, you're going to have both boys and girls in the nest. If our climate is changing and we're getting warmer and warmer, that's actually not good for turtle nests because that means the sandy nest is going to get warmer and warmer as well. And it's likely we're actually going to see many, many more gir girl turtles than boy turtles. But we need to have both around in order to have baby turtles. So this is why it's really important for turtles to have a very um, a consistent climate, something that they've evolved to, to live in, all right? So here, that's the difference, right? So they, um, they have these different flippers here. The moving is a little bit different, even though they still have to breathe air. So that's one of the reasons why our turtle friends, our sea turtle friends have to go up on land and they do have to walk on land. Now, wait a minute, walk on land with those flippers? How does that work? Well, you can see these little babies here kind of wiggling around a little bit. These ones just hatched. So they're probably pretty tired from hatching and from digging out of their sandy nest. But you can see they still use those flippers. It's almost like how they swim. They kind of paddle around a little bit and almost like army crawl. If you've ever uh, thought, man, what is it like to move like a sea turtle on land? You should try it out. Maybe on, on like your floor or something. Make sure you have lots of space so that way you don't run into things. But, um, but they kind of almost do like this army crawl thing. They could do both at the same time and kind of push themselves. I've also seen them kind of army crawl one at a time like this as well. So, uh, so they can still move on land, but they're not as good at it. If you were to watch a desert tortoise, the desert tortoise is much better at walking on land. But look, they still get by. Even this little newborn is still getting by pretty well walking on that sand. Good job, little buddy. Keep going. <laughs> All right. Now, another thing that's really interesting, and you can actually see here, do you notice this shell? The shell is very slim, okay? It's very slim. And that slim shell of a sea turtle is fantastic for swimming because when you're slim, that means you can cut through the water really easily. If there was a big domed shell like what you see in a desert tortoise, they wouldn't be able to swim very easily. They'd have to exert more energy to push themselves through water because there's so much resistance in the water. If you've ever walked in water before, you can feel that. It's much harder to walk in water than it is to walk on land. So having that slim shell actually makes it a little bit easier to move in the water. But there's no room in that slim shell to hide. So we all know, right, tortoises, when they want to hide, when they're scared, they tuck their head in and they tuck their, their arms in and they can hide inside their shells and they don't have to worry as much about a predator getting them, right? Because that shell, again, is really, really hard. Well, if you look here, you can tell this sea turtle cannot fit inside that shell. It has long flippers and actually a pretty good sized head here. So none of that's going to fit inside there. So instead, they just have to be able to swim and maneuver themselves to use their shell as protection. 
Now, have you ever wondered what it looks like inside of a turtle shell? Well, they have all their guts in there because this is basically their body. So their shells are actually part of their body. And I have a shell here just to show you what the underside looks like. Now this here is a green turtle shell and you can see the, the turtle here just behind me. This is basically the shell that you would, um, that it would, that would be on its back. Okay. So we're accustomed to seeing this side. What about the inside? Is this what you expected? Maybe not, right? So if you look inside here, you'll notice that it's not just a smooth shell. In fact, it's quite bumpy. What do you think those are? If you're saying ribs, nice job. Yes, this, these are their ribs. So their ribs are actually fused into this hard shell. So you can see that there. Now look down the middle. That's its backbone. So you can see its backbone was actually fused into the shell here. So a lot of cartoons are pretty funny and they have turtles and tortoises taking their shell off, hanging it up, and then they go sit on the couch or a comfy chair. Well, they can't do that. The shell is actually attached to their body. It is part of their body, a really important part, right? Because if the shell was removed, then you're basically looking at its guts and that's definitely not good for that animal, right? So these shells are incredibly important um, for their protection because they are so nice and hard, all right? Cool. Now we have a few questions here, so let's answer those. Reese is asking, how do turtles hold their breath? when they eat underwater? Oh man, that's such a good question. Okay, turtles are kind of crazy. Um, they can hold their breath really well, which is awesome. Um, in fact, I think that some of them actually hold their breath for like hours. I'm, I'm saying like four to seven hours. That's a really, really long time to hold your breath. Trust me, we can't do it. We are not made that way. Um, and one of the ways that they do that is because they actually kind of slow down the function of their body. If they're going to be sleeping, um, their heart rate slows down. They can slow. This is crazy. I just actually saw this statistic earlier. They can slow their heartbeat to one beat every nine minutes. So our heart goes ba-bum, 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 right? So it beats quite fast. For a turtle, it would go ba-bum. And then nine minutes later, ba-bum. And then nine minutes later, ba-bum. So all of that means it's using less oxygen. And that's why they can hold their breath for so long. Now, how do they eat, though, if they're underwater, right? Like if we tried to eat underwater, that would be really, really hard. Well, um, they can actually swallow some seawater. They don't tend to swallow a lot of seawater, but they can swallow some. And here's the other thing that's kind of interesting. We see their nose, right? You can see the nose hole right here. They can actually smell underwater. And this is crazy. When they smell underwater, the water doesn't go into their lungs. It actually just cycles back out of them. So their, uh, their noses are kind of designed differently from ours. If you tried to smell underwater, you would suck in the water and it would go in your lungs and you would cough and you'd have to get it all out. So definitely don't try to do that underwater. We are not turtles. Sea turtles are made specially to be able to live in that underwater world. So um, great question, Reese. I love it. Now we have a turtle here. Let's watch it eating. Aha! So this one is eating lots of that delicious seagrass that it's finding down there. And so we can see here that there is some water that's, that's getting in its mouth. And so it can drink some seawater. That's okay. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so it, it is getting rid of some of that water, though. It's not like they're taking in big gulps of seawater every time they're eating. So... Um, Okay, we also have, um, oh, Jacob and Liam asking, what do turtles eat? Well, we just got some evidence there, right? Some of them eat things like seagrass and algae, and especially things like a green sea turtle. Now, there are seven different types of sea turtles out there, and the green sea turtle is really the only one that's strictly an herbivore when it becomes an adult. That means it really just eats things like seagrass and algae, seaweeds, basically. Um, and then all the other turtles, all the rest of them, the other six types, um, they actually eat kind of a variety. So a lot of them really go after things that are gelatinous or jelly-like, like 
a jellyfish. That's right. So turtles are known to eat things like jellies. Um, they also eat lots of other kind of jelly type animals. There's so many different animals out there that are made of that jelly like stuff, just like jellies here, but they don't have these crazy long tentacles. So they wouldn't be called a jellyfish um, or a sea jelly. They'd be called something else. But, um, but those are real good eats for turtles. They will also eat things like uh, crabs, like shrimp, and also even uh, sponges. Did you know that sponges are alive? Not all sponges. The sponges that we typically use in our households are actually made, but they were made and designed after a real animal, an invertebrate called a sponge. They look a whole lot like it. They're, they're really like holy and everything, and they live in the water. And so sponges are a really common thing for, um, for several different species to eat as well. Now, how are they eating these things like crabs and shrimp? Those have really hard um, shells to eat, right? Well, they have a beak. Now let's take a look at, oh, where did it go? Ha ha, I found it. Okay, I have here a turtle skull. And this turtle skull is going to show us what these mouths look like. So just imagine this little hard shell critter here. And a turtle finds it and says, ha ha, I'm hungry. So it uses that crazy mouth. Do you see this mouth? Man. So this mouth is perfectly designed to crunch up those hard shells. It's pretty amazing. Now, of course, they're also real good at uh, crunching up those jelly-like things too, right? So if you can eat something crunchy like a hard shell of a crab, it can also squish a jelly as well. So this here is a model of a, of a sea turtle called a leatherback sea turtle, the biggest sea turtles out there. All right. Thank you so much for your questions, uh, Jacob and Liam. Now, let's see, we have another question here. How many miles per hour can turtles swim? Um, they typically cruise pretty slowly, less than like a mile um, an hour. So they really don't need to exert a lot of energy because when you, when you swim really, really fast, it means you're gonna need to breathe more. It also means you're gonna need to eat more. So cruising is really their, their ideal. But if they needed to, some of them can swim up to 22 miles an hour. Um, so that's like quick burst speed, and then they'd probably need to slow down again. So that is the speed of turtles. And then we have Oliver and Julian asking if turtles sleep. Yes, they do. In fact, do you remember the, the Shark Lagoon um, camera that we had up when we first started? Ah, we see more of it. <laughs> so you can see the little turtle tail right there. So this turtle here is probably sleeping. They're actually real good sleepers. Um, and most of the time they do try to tuck in to a place like a crevice or a cave in order to sleep. Why do you think they do that? Well, if you're sleeping, you don't want anything to, to find you, right? And, and maybe even potentially eat you. So finding a cave like this, it just kind of keeps you a little bit safer. So this is typically what we see um, when our turtles are, are sleeping. And yes, this turtle can be here for hours before it actually goes up to the surface to get a breath of air. All right, so let's see, another question here. How long is a turtle's lifespan? And it really kind of depends on, um, on the turtle. So let's see, we have, uh, it looks like sea turtles, it would probably be somewhere between 30 and 50 years or so. Um, it looks like maybe land turtles can get older than that. Um, I think uh, some tortoises can get over 100 years. I don't know how much more than 100 years, but they can get to be very, very old. Um, maybe 150 or so. So, um, so yeah, it, it would depend on, on the species of turtle and also kind of its lifestyle, right? Um, and then we have Penny asking, do turtles have teeth? Ah, that's a great question. We saw that skull, right? Let me go get it again. Ah, here we go. Ah, this is a great one too, this picture here. Okay, so we see here, kind of toothless. But did you see that its beak is jaggedy? Now, green sea turtles are the ones with the really, really jaggedy um, jaws. So right here, you see all the little bumps and stuff. And that's because they need to be able to bite through grass and bite through seaweed. So in order to do that, they need to have all those jaggedy, jaggedy parts. So it kind of cuts, um, cuts the plant material a little bit better. You can see here on our leatherback, it's actually smoother. And that's because they don't need to really rip into things like grass and, um, and seaweed. So pretty cool. 
So no teeth here. However, it's crazy. Inside their mouth, they actually have um, little projections, almost like um, almost like spikes, but they're not like super sharp and hard. Um, but they have like spikes in their mouth and going down into their throat, which is really important when you don't want whatever you ate to be able to swim back out again because they don't chew, right? If they don't have teeth, right, Penny? They don't have teeth. So um, they can't chew up their food. So they're swallowing it whole and you don't want it to be able to swim back out again because you put in a lot of effort to eat that thing. So all of those kind of um, projections, all those kind of like spikes or whatever inside their uh, mouth and in their throat can actually help them keep that food inside their mouth. It's pretty nuts. All right, my friends. Well, it looks like uh, we're actually out of time, but I had a lot of fun hanging out with all of you and learning about turtles together. Now, if you do have more questions, please feel free to send them in. We're still going to be answering questions via text. And of course, you're always welcome to email us too at live at lbaop.org. Thanks so much again for joining us. And uh, in just 30 minutes, we're going to start another episode about exploring the ocean. So exploring the ocean is how we know so much about things like turtles. All right. Thanks so much. Hopefully we'll see you then. Bye.